Hi guys! So, you bought a new do-it-yourself 3D printer and you have finished the build? If yes, then this is for you. Today I want to talk about the checks you should do before your first power on and the tests you should run before your first print. These are very important to make sure that your new do-it-yourself 3D printer is ok and this way prevent other complications that might come up. These checks and tests can be done in most do-it-yourself 3D printers. In my case, I will be using a TiVo Tarantula 3D printer. So let's start with the things you need to check before your first power on. The very first thing you must do is to confirm the input voltage selector of the power supply. If for example you live in Europe, your main voltage should be 220 volts, like me, and in that case you must have the selector this way. If your main voltage is 110, then you must change the selector to the opposite side. All the electrical connections must be secure and correctly made. The correct way is to install ferrules and ring terminals. Check all the main connections. Also, recheck the polarity of the wires. You can also do a quick check on the end stop wires to check if the solder joints are still ok after all the handling during the assembly. Next are the fans. The hot end fan must be installed with a sticker facing in and it must be connected directly to the power supply because this fan must be spinning all the time. The same thing applies to the mainboard cooling fan. Do not connect any of these fans to the fan output of the mainboard. That output is only for the layer fan, which is not included in this kit. Next, do a quick access check. Check if all end stops can be mechanically triggered correctly. Move manually each and every access all the way to test the full travel. Inspect if the axis move freely all the way. During the build, you probably check the hot end installation. The nozzle must be screwed against the heat brake inside and not against the heat block. This is an example of the correct way. If you have doubts on this, just follow the instructions in the video I made about this. You can find the link in the description below. Because if the hot end is not assembled correctly, you will end up with clogs and or leaks. Plus. If your printer has a PTFE tube, you must guarantee that it is installed correctly and be sure that it goes all the way down to the nozzle. If the tube is not installed correctly, you will end up with clogs and or leaks as well. I also have a video explaining how to do this, so just look for the link below. Now we can proceed with the first power on, so go ahead and connect the main plug. Confirm that both cooling fans are spinning. The display will initialize and will show some information. If you are not happy with the contrast of the display, there is always a contrast potentiometer at the back side. This potentiometer may vary its shape between display types. Use a tool to turn the potentiometer. Do it slowly and carefully. If you turn all the way to one side, you will only see the black light and no information on the screen. If you turn all the way to the other side, you will only see squares. So you need to find the sweet spot where you can see the information clearly on the screen. Now confirm the temperatures. On the left side, you should see the actual temperature reading on the nozzle, and on the right side, you should see the actual temperature reading on the heat pad. 
If you get wrong readings, just check the temperature sensors and their connections. Next, move manually the X and Y axis to the center and move the Z a bit up. Go to your menu and select Prepare. Move axis. One millimeter and start with the X axis. Rotate the knob and as you can see the coordinates increase, you should see the X carriage move. Check if it moves correctly. Also, and very important, check that as you increase the coordinates, it moves away from the home position, or, in other words, away from the end stop's trigger position. Turning the knob the other way, the coordinates will decrease and the axis must move to the end stop trigger position. Check all the other axes. If one of the axes is moving the wrong way, you must fix this issue before starting your first automatic home sequence. For the extruder, you will not be able to test unless you increase the nozzle temperature above a certain value. This is a safety feature and it's defined in the firmware. Raising the nozzle temperature above 190 degrees C is enough. Wait until the nozzle reaches the temperature and then check the extruder motor. The motor must turn its gears so that it pushes the filament into the hot end while the coordinates increase and must pull the filament out as the coordinates decrease. Now we are ready to start our first home sequence, but we must be certain that the end stops will work correctly, so we will trigger them ourselves. For this, you must be quick. Select Home All Axes and trigger the end switches before the carriages reach them. For the Z, you must trigger the switch twice. If one of the axes does not stop when you trigger the switch, quickly hit the stop switch using a plastic tool. Don't try to stop the machine by pulling the main plug, because that way the machine will still move for a while. If everything worked well, I mean the axes stopped when you triggered the end stops and the axes were moving in the correct direction, then, go ahead and proceed with your automatic home sequence. Next, heat up the bed and check if it's working correctly. You should see the output LED indicator turning on when heating up and turning off when it reaches the set temperature. If you have an external MOSFET, it should have also an LED indicator. If not, just check the information on the screen. And that's it! You are now ready to start your calibrations and prints. Thanks for watching and happy prints!